drinking from the spring of living water every Monday during the Bible study of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry is such an enriching experience that affords you an unforgettable encounter with God and His Word. The vibrant general superintendent of the ministry, Pastor W.F. Komuyi, is a renowned minister and teacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, having traveled worldwide for the propagation of the gospel. Each contact with his ministration gives you the privilege of joining a thirsty and expectant congregation to receive the bread of life, which satisfies the body, soul, and spirit through anointed messages filled with unction of the Holy Ghost. This message will transform you and help to deepen your walk with God and your service to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sit back as we present to you the unchanging Word of God through His minister, whose entire life revolves around the preaching of the gospel of salvation and purity of life in preparation for life here and hereafter. Let's welcome Pastor W.F. Kumui. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our fellowship around the world tonight again. We thank you, Lord, because every time we come, you reveal your mind, your will, your purpose, your plan to us. And Lord, we pray both young and old, child, children and parents, and the leaders and the teachers, as well as the learners. Every one of us will learn from your word tonight in Jesus' name. We're asking, O oh Lord, you keep us awake. That, Lord, the tiredness of the body will not make us sleep while the word is going on in Jesus' name. Amen. Teach us, Lord. Amen. And lead us in the word. We pray that the grace to follow through and the grace to so learn that will bring conviction, transformation, power in our life. You give unto us in Jesus' name. That all of us will see the glory, the beauty of the study of the world in every life. And will be want to follow after the Lord like we are following the Lord in Jesus' name. Bring conviction through the world. Commitment through the world. Courage through the world. That we'll be able to go on living according to the conviction. You are painted and planted in our hearts in Jesus' name. Lead your people, teach your people tonight. Be glorified and exalted. And let the church be edified. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I welcome you to the Bible study tonight. It's always a glorious time, wonderful time, as we meet together and we study the Word of God. By the way, you'll notice that when the book of Daniel and Daniel has two parts. It's like it has the historic part and then the prophetic part. The historic part is uh, what you have in chapters 1 to 6. And then the prophetic part we have in chapter 7 all through to 12. We've taken our time going very slowly in chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The reason we've done that is because there's so much to learn of the life of Daniel and his three friends and the people around them at that time. And we're about concluding chapter 6 before you come into chapter 7, which is prophetic. We're looking at three verses today in Daniel chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 25. Then King Darius wrote unto all people and nations and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth. And he walketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who has delivered Daniel from the power of lions. You know what has happened here? Already we've gone through 
In Daniel chapter 6, verses 1, all through to 24. And the people that plotted and planned, they wanted Daniel dead. But the believer will never die before his time. And you will not die before your time in Jesus' name. You know those people, they wanted to deny Daniel of prolonged ministry. Not only that, they wanted to deny the church of the revelation that God has for us in chapter 7 all through to 12. What if they succeeded? I mean those enemies, I mean those persecutors, I mean those haters of progress. And what if they succeeded in getting rid of Daniel? How would you be able to have the book of Daniel? How would you be able to have all these other chapters that follow? You know what the devil wants to do in your life is to stop your ministry, but he will not succeed. Amen. You see, a child of God has a calling of God, has a commission from God, and you do not know the things that are still ahead that you are going to do, and you are going to do them. But thank God they did not succeed. And so Daniel remained alive. And because he remained alive, you know the story, how the king came very early in the morning. And then he said, Daniel, are you still there? It's your God, whom you serve day and night continually. Is he able to deliver you from the mouth and from the power of the lions? And then Daniel replied and said, my God has sent his angel. And he has shut the lions' mouths that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before the old king have I done no hurt and that's where we start up the other time and the king became so happy in verse 23 then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den. And no manner of hurt was found upon him. Because what? He believed his God. Like I'm sure you believe your God. That triumph. That overcoming power of Daniel over those lions. The face that he had produced a great testimony to the, t to the power and the care and the love of the living God for his own. It was faith in God that made Daniel dare the decree of the king. It was faith in Daniel that made him remain calm under life's threatening trouble and trial. You see, when you have faith in God, there will be no panicking. There will be no fear. And there will be no anxiety or worry. You will be calm. You will be cool. And you'll be fearless and bold with conviction, even though your life might be threatened, because you know you will not die before your time. And because you know whatever happens in the world, God has the final say. Christ has the final say. In your life, Satan does not have the final say. The world does not have the final say. And all those persecutors, all those enemies, they do not have the final say. Who has the final say? God. Who has the final say? Christ. The final say you find in the promise of God. And that means then that your word, when you stand on the promises by faith, you with God and Christ in you, you have the final say. If you say, I will not die, you will not die. If you say, the lions will not destroy me, they will not destroy you. If you say unto the mountain, you mountain, I'm still going to get rid of you. And I have a further ministry to have, uh, to be able to minister to other people. You have the final say. I said, you have the final say. So I'm asking you then, what do you say? When those presidents and princes... When those persecutors and lions, when they're all there gazing at you and they want to destroy you. And you remember that they don't have the final say. And that the enemies don't have the final say. That you have the final say. And whatever you say, you'll have what you say. And if you say, I'm going to get in there and come out and continue ministry, you'll, it will be like that in Jesus' name. It was the faith that Daniel had. That was the faith that kept him. And the faith will keep you in Jesus' name. It was faith that brought assurance that all will be well at the end. And I want to tell you, in your life, all will be well at the end. 
and it will be well with you this year in Jesus name and then they knew that then they knew that it was well because of that that's why he had peace that's why he had patience uh, until his uh, in his heart in the hour of danger and probable death it was prayer that moved God's heart to send the angel into the den and to shut the mouths of all the lions all the lions in your life the Lord will shut their mouth in Jesus name God recognizes faith and response to all its call and petition. And then when Daniel came out, the Bible says no manner of heart was found upon him because he believed in his God. The deliverance of Daniel brought a great discovery to Darius the king. He saw God as a living God, having personality, having love, having affection, having compassion in his heart, having power, kingdom, glory, dominion, majesty. The great God is not just a great mighty force like electricity. He is the living God. He is not an impersonal, person, impersonal, powerful substance. And he is not just like thunder or like any other force that has no life. He is the living God. He is not like man, living and growing, who passes from infancy to manhood in life. He is the unchanging God. It touched the spirit of Darius that there is a being, a God, a living God that could accomplish such grace of supernatural acts uncommon to man since the world began. He could not resist the urge. He could not resist the desire to proclaim and publish the knowledge and the revelation of the living God to all people, all nations, and all languages that dwell in all the earth. That's why the Bible is telling us that like they did, you don't want a person like Nebuchadnezzar to beat you to it, to go ahead of you and do more than you are doing. You see, when Nebuchadnezzar had the miracle working power of God in his life, he gave the glory to God, not just in local place, he published it, publicized it in all nations and with people and languages. And now when Darius saw this, even though the miracle did not happen to Darius in particular, it happened to Daniel. All the same, he said, you cannot keep this. You cannot keep quiet. You cannot hold on to this. You cannot hide this. Everybody must know. Everybody was here. And because of that, he published it everywhere. And that's what we are going to do. And that's what you are going to do. You'll tell everybody around you of the, of the miracle working power of God in Jesus' name. Look at Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people and nations and languages that dwell in all the earth. You see what he did? You see what Nebuchadnezzar did when he came out of his sanity? When he came out of the problem that he had, we are told he wrote unto all the people, all the nations, all the languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and the wonders that the high God has wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And his dominion is from generation to generation. And if you have gratitude in your heart, and you're happy, and you know that God has done something great for you, he saved your soul. He brought peace in your heart. You are reconciled unto God. He has healed you. He has delivered you. You want to tell everybody around. That's what Nebuchadnezzar did. And even when it has not happened to you directly, it has happened to your friend. It has happened to somebody you love. It has happened to somebody that you know. Like Darius knew Daniel. And that thing happened to Daniel. He wasn't the one that received the miracle. But because of this great manifestation of the power of God, he said, everybody must hear this, even though I'm not the one that received the miracle. And as uh, whatever miracle you hear in your district, in your region, in your nation, in your state, anywhere, you go and tell other people to show the might and the glory, the power and the strength of the Almighty God. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 34. Isaiah chapter 34. I'm reading from verse 1. Come near, ye nations, to hear. 
and hearken ye people, let the earth hear, and all that dwell therein, the world, and all things that come forth of it. This has always been the attitude of children of the children of God, of the servants of the Lord, that when God has done something wonderful and something great, they want to tell everybody around, come and hear. That's why Jesus gave us a great commission. After they saw, after those disciples saw him, he rose from the dead. And they saw the manifestation of the power of God in raising him from the dead. He said, now you have seen. Now you have known. It's me, myself. I died, but then I've risen again for the salvation of the world. Now you go into all the world and, and teach and preach the gospel. This good news and this glad tidings, the story of redemption. Go and tell everyone that Jesus Christ is risen again. Go and tell everyone they don't have to die in their sins. Go and tell everyone they can be saved because Jesus Christ died for them. And he rose again. If Darius did it, you can do it, you are going to do it. If Nebuchadnezzar did it, you can do it, you are going to do it. If the apostles did it, you can do it, and you are going to do it in Jesus' name. We're looking at uh, this study tonight on the divine attributes of the living God. The divine attributes of the living God. Come back to Daniel chapter 6. In Daniel chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 26. It says, I make a decree. That in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. And I begins to give us the attributes of that God. And begins to give us the authority of that God. Begins to give us the acts of that God. He talks about his attributes. He talks about his authority. And talks about his action, his acts. Look at verse 26. It says, before the God of Daniel... For he is the living God and steadfast forever. And his kingdom that we shall not be destroyed. And his dominion shall be even unto the end. Now the acts of the actions and the wonders, the signs and the things that he did. In verse 27, he delivered and rescued. And you know, you see, you see Darius. Uh, Darius could have said he delivered. He rescued if he was talking about Daniel alone. But this man, he saw that this is a living God. And a living God does not only act in the past. A living God does not only do something in the past. He acted in the past. He's acting now. He will continue to act. That's why.